All right, welcome back to another episode of Catch and Tie. Fish you're gonna see today is a beautiful hook-jawed rainbow trout caught in western Pennsylvania, actually in Brady's Run Park. Little creek above the lake, actually it's part of the lake, it just runs out of the lake, or actually the part that runs into the lake, just above it. Caught him on a rough water caddis, dry fly. Something that I put together. I'm, I'm not the originator of this fly. It's been around for a while. Other people have tied it. It's my version of it. I'm going to do a little fatter maybe than this. You can tie it several different ways. Here is the same fly with the hackle feathers, the barbules, stripped off one side. You can see, let me put it behind it, you can see how you can see more of the body on this than you can on this one here. This is a little more fuller body. Here's the original fly that that fish took. Got a lot of fish spit on it. Pretty well beat up. Tail is really beat up for some reason. So, but this is the one he took. First I'm going to show you the fish. How I caught him, where I caught him. He was rising. Didn't know what he was rising for. Didn't see anything hatching. So I threw this on. First thing I when I opened my fly, dry fly box, it stood out. Tied it on. Threw it right at him. Right above him. Drifted it down to him. He wouldn't take it. So I started to skate it across the water. And that's one thing this fly is good for. It skates really well. It won't sink too quick. It will sink eventually. But as I was skating it, he took it. Probably more of a reaction strike than anything, but it worked. I caught him, and this is the fly that did it. Okay, thank you. Stay tuned. There he is. Still there. Dude, you don't take this fly here. Is right there. Blues and looking for a cheap mill. I see you. Gotcha. I gotcha. All right. I seen you cruising around there. <clears throat> there we go. Come on. Oh, you're a nice looking fish. Yeah, you are. Beautiful. Bell rainbow. Oh, wow, look at that jaw on you. Wow. Well, you ain't hooked that good, are you? <clears throat> Get that fly out of there before he does more damage to you. Yeah. <sighs> Come on. 
Look at you, man. You are sweet. Look at you. We'll see ya. All right, get back to where you were. Okay, the materials we're going to be using for this fly is this saddle. Mustad Viking hooks from about 50 years ago, size 10. Dry fly, part of my father's collection from decades ago. When he first taught me how to tie some flies, he was pretty organized. He had everything written on everything, what he, how he wanted to use it. Use the uh, super glue, Sally Hansen's super fine dubbing from Waspy, dry fly dubbing. This elk body hair, cow, and 75 denier thread, royal sissy. It's S I S S I. Don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Maybe somebody could tell me. And that should be it. All right, let's get to tying. We have in the vise is a mustad Viking hook from Norway. Back from the late 60s, early 70s. That's probably uh, when I tied my first flies with my father. I was still a youngster. Seven, eight, nine years old. It's from his collection. Those hooks. We're going to start with wrapping, touching wraps backwards. We're going to go ahead and cut off the tag end here. And I'm going to wrap it back to the top of the bend of the hook. You really don't want this tail facing downward. You want it facing straight back. So go ahead and wrap the thread back to almost the front. We're going to leave a couple millimeters behind the eye. I'm going to take the super glue. You're going to give it a little swipe. On top of the thread, I found this little trick to be useful to help that elk hair to stay in place. Just a little bit, that's all you need. I already prepped the uh, elk hair and the stacker. Give it a couple final stacks. And when you pull it out, you want all the tips to be nice and aligned like they are. Go ahead and pinch them. Pull out any short ones. I've already done that once. Let's do it again. It looks like there might have been a couple of short ones in there. And you're going to go ahead and just lay this right on top. You're going to leave the tail. Oh, just maybe a half an inch or so. And go ahead and real loosely. You're going to wrap back. And when you get back to the top of the bed of the hook, go ahead and start wrapping forward just a little tighter this time. Wrap it into the hair that just Splay it up on you and go ahead and wrap back. Go ahead, park your thread. We're going to go ahead and take that deer hair that's all splayed out. Go ahead and pull it up. Just pull this up here actually. And then you want to wrap in front. A few wraps in front. 
Now you want to go ahead and cut that to length. And cut it level. Go ahead and take your thread, wrap back behind it. Take it back to the tail. And now we're going to go ahead and add our feather. See how it looks on your side. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I know sometimes when I'm filming here I forget to look and see how it looks on the other side there. Alright, take your feather that I uh, selected out of that saddle. And again, super glue is my friend. I'm going to put a little dab of that on just the stem of the feather. And you're going to wrap it in. Super glue will hold it in place. We're not going to use any wire on this. Alright, from here we're going to add this super fine dry fly dubbing from Waspy. You don't want very much. You want it just a little bit. This is real fine dubbing. That's why they call it super fine apparently. And dub it onto your thread. Make a little dubbing noodle there. Go ahead and wrap it up. Keep it pretty tight. Need to add a little more. Better to add a little more as you go than have too much, then you gotta strip it all off and throw it away or That should be enough. All you want to do basically is cover the thread. Make the thread black. Little hairy body. Okay, now that it's all dubbed up there, good. We'll wrap a couple more in there. Tight up against the Don't care. Okay, perfect. Okay, and I'll take this hackle feather and start wrapping up. You want very tight wraps. You want this hackle feather to be almost touch touching the whole way up. That's why you need to use a long piece of hackle. You can see that I didn't strip the one side of the barbules off of the feather. The reason I didn't do it on this, I've done it many times on this fly before, but I noticed that fly that that fish took, that's how I tied it with, without stripping it. It floats good either way, but if you strip the one side of the feathers off, you'll see more of the black body. This here covers up the black body a little bit, but it still shows pretty well. So either way, however you want to do it. Go ahead and capture that. Good. Give it uh, a try to make sure you get all the. Don't mess it up too much. 
All right, go ahead and cut the alcohol out. Here I like to take a little bit of that Sally Hansen's and put a little bit of a little drop on the thread. And go ahead and wrap that behind the head just to secure that little butter in there. And go ahead and take the front up. Now we're going to whip finish it. Pretty easy dry fly to tie once you get into it. it. Might look a little intimidating at first, but all in all, it's pretty easy. Good, cut that off. See how that head looks. Got a couple stragglers down below there. Don't need those guys hanging down there. All right, now what we're going to do is trim the belly of this fly. I like it about half of a gap of the hook. So when it hits the water, it lays flat. I'm going to use this little brush here. This is a uh, little brush I got for fancy mayfly tails. But until it's all used up, it's a good brush to clean this up. See how it looks. That looks pretty good. A little bit of Sally Hansen's on the bottom there, with that exposed thread. on there. Alright, so there you have it. You have a rough water caddis. That's the fly that that fish took. I had to skate it when I was doing it. Uh, I threw it in front of him a couple times. He didn't take it. And then I seen him chasing something around in that little pool there. And I started skating up past him and he, he went for it. Okay, there you go. Rough water caddis. Size 10 hook from an old Mustad Viking hook, five decades old. And if you like this fly, please hit me a subscribe, a subscribe button and the like button. Tell me what you like about it or what you don't like about it, but it works well. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.